Hey everybody and welcome to On the Glide Slope. It has been some time since I did the first video tour of the basement simulator that uh, we've got here and uh, I've made quite a few changes to it since then and so I thought I'd do a quick tour um, just to kind of bring everyone up to the latest. Um, this is the new panel which I built uh, about two months ago. The old one uh, just was uh, not only getting beat up but the fact of the matter is I had changed some avionics and other things, had a new yoke it was just time to redo the panel. Um, but I'll just sort of start from the top here, and some of this will be new and some of it will be repeat from the first time around. Um, this is uh, some real world, real world parts here. That's uh, an air vent from a Cessna 172 that I got on eBay. And I just built this little tab here for it on the side of the panel in which it can sit. And we have here, uh, we've got uh, Cessna um, sun shades, sun visors, which work, and uh, they were from uh, eBay as well. They can be expensive. I think you could use automobile sun shades. I just waited till I found an appropriate price. Uh, puck lighting, uh, just from the local hardware store. This is the SciTech uh, information panel, which I've mounted in the ceiling, and a SciTech FIP. That wet compass is from Tom Sui at FSX Times. Works great. Uh, in front is the screen, which is a 100-inch projection, projection screen, and then we've got the same uh, elements over on this side of the cabin. The glare shield is one inch thick, high-density foam, which I've covered with leatherette, and uh, I just made it myself. I couldn't get a strip of leatherette long enough to go all the way, so we've got a small seam here, but uh, I simply cut uh, a nine-inch wide segment of high-density foam, covered it with leatherette, uh, use spray adhesive to hold it down and it just simply slides into place as you can see uh, here we have LED lighting just strip lighting that I cut to the length that I wanted and originally it put uh, kind of a dashed light across the cabin uh, I since have since recessed it I just cut a hole into the glare shield a track and then have put the uh, lighting in there and then have used Staples actually just straightened out staples to hold that in place The controls for that lighting are down below which I'll show in a second um, Coming across the main panel just <laughs> just a little uh, list of my different uh, velocities For the different airplanes that I fly in the sim F8, This is uh, SciTech FIP. We have uh, an iPad which is running um, In this case the remote flight cockpit software, which is an app that works well with both prepared and x-plane if I choose not to run that, I can run Air Manager. If I want to have a different cockpit uh, six-pack layout, in which case that's for a twin, or I can even run um, I can even run uh, like a G1000 if that's what I chose to do, and that all works great. Sorry about the quick edit there, I had to take a quick break for something. Um, so continuing with the panel, then uh, this is the Yoko yoke um, from Yoko. I originally had a SciTech yoke. This is much more like the real thing, no detent, and has internal tension. It's hard to pull back all the way and push in all the way. Um, feels much more like real world uh, simulation, and since I'm flight training, I'm very glad I got this. Uh, and then some more SciTech FIPs, and then we have the radio stack from uh, Flight Illusion, which I'll power up in a second. Uh, again, this is meant to replicate almost exactly the stack that I use in my real world flight training, in this case a Bendix King stack. I find it works very, very well. This is a seven inch touchscreen display. In a perfect world, I run a GTN 750 touchscreen GPS on it. Um, so far in the X-Plane beta, uh, you're unable to drag the GTN over to a different window. So it's just showing the uh, 530 from X-Plane at the moment. Uh, another FIP, SciTech Yoke, a uh, small keyboard that I can use if I need a keyboard that's held on by Velcro. So I can just attach it if I need to detach it. And uh, if I have to get to a keyboard, that works great. A SciTech TPM, very hard to come by these days. It seems like they're almost all out. Um, some more puck lighting, by the way, and then I can uh, control that lighting uh, from here. So I can 
from these small remotes I can turn the lighting off or on both at the bottom and at the top as well as change colors which my kids like to do and then over here we have a desktop aviator uh, Cessna switch panel which I like very much works very well we'll use that here in a second uh, we've got uh, some other accoutrements from real airplanes, a small door handle from a Cessna, an assist handle from a Cessna, trim around the uh, 32 inch LEDs that serve as the side windows, which I have on both sides, and headsets. Real world headsets from Rugged Radio, cheapest I could find, uh, worked very well. Center console, which has been built since the first tour. Here I have just mounted, really just Velcroed on top, a SciTech trim panel and a quadrant. People often say, why do I use the throttle quadrant? Uh, I have this set to flaps, this set to uh, parking brake, and we'll use this as mixture in the Cessna. And then if I'm flying a low wing or a Piper aircraft, I use these as throttle mixture and prop. This is the, there's not enough light, here we go. This is the uh, FSX Dual unit from uh, FSX uh, Dual. It is used as my um, intercom for the headsets to plug into. It works great. I enjoy it. And then down here at the bottom, we have the desktop aviator fuel select switch, uh, which I've mounted into the center console. Uh, we've got rudder pedals, SciTech Cessna rudder pedals at the bottom of the cabin, some pockets that I've mounted in the side for maps and uh, checklists and the rest. And then the side of the panel is uh, a quarter inch or one eighth of an inch, sixteenth of an inch, something like that. Corrugated plastic, as you can see. And then I've covered it with muslin on the inside. And below I've covered it with leatherette, so it looks more like a real airplane. And then I've got a front panel back where the feet go as well, also that has uh, leatherette covering it. So, um, we'll go ahead and, and uh, start things up here. So you can see how things work. Turn on the fuel pump, beacon light, throttle all the way in, or mixture in, throttle in, turn the key. And there we go. So, it uh, works. I'll show you the outside now of the uh, cockpit. So the seating is just office seating office chairs, which I have uh, taken the arms off of, and they roll so that they can slide in and out. I have butt kickers mounted on each, so there are rumblers which help add uh, some realism to it, and at least for mine, that's the rumbler butt kicker control right there, so I can turn up the volume if I want to, Let's turn off the fuel pump while we're at it. And then this is the outside. So if I step back, there's the whole sim. As you can see, uh, there's some basic schematics on the website. We've got the 100 inch projection screen. Let me turn on this light here, which I just have mounted into the ceiling and it pulls down. That is the ultra short throw projector. And as you can see, it's only maybe Oh, 18 inches away from the screen. There's this, the main PC that runs it all. And then here's a view of the back. So you can see the back of the glare shield. I've constructed a little beam here with just some cardboard to hold this up so I can set things on the glare shield. And then there's our avionics and controls speakers. There's a subwoofer there. And that's pretty much that. The TVs, as you see, I just have sitting in on a wooden base that's behind the paneling here. They sit on that base and just rest freely so I can slide them a little bit if I need to. They're held in by the corrugated plastic no problem. If I come around to this side, you'll see it's the same design. And I have built a simple hatch so that I can get to the BPM unit if I need to. 
and that is pretty much the current state of the basement sim. Carpeting is just a piece of remnant carpeting that I have, uh, and it just sits all along the concrete. There's no uh, built base for any of this, um, but that's pretty much how it works. So that's the outside view again. And as you come inside, it starts to get a little more immersive. Now we'll turn on our avionics. Again, using the desktop aviator switch. And you can see these things come alive. So that is simply the X-Plane GPS, which I've dragged across to that screen. And then these are the Flight Illusion radios, which work very well and have no problem communicating with the sim. So I think that is the current and up-to-date tour. Bring back the throttle a little bit here. We don't want to burn gas. Hobbs time counts, costs money. And uh, that's sort of the state of things. So I hope this is a good update. I know people are starting to build their own sims and uh, built on this model. Again, Flight Sim Liberty was the first inspiration for me, and um, uh, I think it's been well worth it from a hobby standpoint. You can tune into the. Are we tuned in any particular VOR? Yeah, that should be the local VOR. Let's see if we can center the needle. There we go. One of the things you can do in SPAD, which I used to run the SciTech gear, is you can configure the buttons and switches on the FIPs. In this case, I have it. To, uh, to move the CDI needle, or the OBS. So that is the latest update. So I hope it's useful, and uh, again, I should be putting out the guide here in the next uh, week or two, and that'll help uh, if someone's trying to build something like this. And in the meantime, thanks for watching on the Glide Slope.